Sign Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old Narrowboat Tilly for episode one of the Narrowboat Diaries, which is hopefully going to be a monthly series ongoing from now on to goodness knows when, where I basically just set up a monthly video diary and have all sorts of footage and clips to show you from each month as time passes. Now, even though it's going to be monthly, I'm only basing the actual video clips and periods loosely around the month. Rather than going, right, this is going to be from exactly the first of the month to the last of the month, I want it to be more in the phases that boat life and my life in general will naturally fall into. So if I'm moving from a certain area over a few days and that passes between the months, then I don't want that to basically create a very abrupt ending when I'm halfway through doing something something. So I suppose that's the very basic quick update and quick introduction to what this is all about. Even though this video is focusing on December I wanted to start with a few clips from November as it was unfortunately the month that saw the worst period of wet and windy weather that I've ever seen since buying Narrowboat Tilly for getting on four years ago and that really has Oh, it's affected what's in this video because it's affected what's happened in my life as I've literally not been able to get out and go off doing the usual things that I would do, clambering over fields and fences to get supplies from the villages and that sort of thing. So it's not going to be the great first episode I'd hoped for. And on top of that, there is a little bit of confusion that slowed down my cruising plans with the works that were going on on this bridge towards the Cheek area, which don't worry, we'll get to later in this video but it was scheduled to take place for most of November and December but only actually took a few days so now that we've got November out of the way we can get to where this video truly begins December the 1st which was a day I'd planned for a while to travel up through the New Martin Locks and unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you want to look at it it was also a day that my mum went away on holiday for just the day the night and then the following morning afternoon which there was nobody to look after the dog or the cat at her house so that meant after going up through the locks I then had to get on my bike hope for the best with the weather and then pedal into town which is only about six to seven miles away no great big deal or anything like that and basically look after the cat and the dog and mill around in town basically answering a lot of comments and doing internet stuff so it's all about making the most of the opportunities and situations as they arise as you can see it was an absolutely beautiful morning to wake up on and open the stern door to see this lovely bit of salmon -y pastel colors in the sky and all the usual classic sunrise on the canal stuff but unfortunately as I was going through the locks and going into some pretty open areas it was extremely windy it's got to be said and it's the sort of wind conditions that had I have known how windy it was I probably would have only moved the boat if there was one of my friends out here on board with me to do it just in case but you can see it's the usual things taking your time going through the locks no rush what a brilliant way to spend an hour or two in the morning and this next clip here really does help to show the wind even though you can't tell from the trees or the grass you can see that Tilly is pinned against the side with no ropes holding her in place but perfectly held in place just from the wind pushing against it and this is where I moored up a nice open area here just by St Martin's just up from the locks I had a chat to a friend from the Canal and River Trust as he was driving down to check on the locks on that very muddy puddly road and then luckily I managed to bike into town in the dry and get to see this crazy dog Pixie running around unfortunately she was awaiting an operation on her eye to remove a very rapidly growing growth and that's why she needed somebody there really just check up on what was happening but the cat certainly had the right idea and hid under the bed back on the canal the following day I got stuck into my usual December business which is getting carried away with Christmas lights this year ending up with 805 lights on board I think if I remember correctly and here's the clip of the outside and yeah I'll let you judge whether that's excessive garish or just a bit of fun anyway back to me on board as mentioned, the weather has been absolutely unbelievably bad over the last two months or so and it's led to unprecedented flooding in parts of the UK and it's just generally been awful. 
And I want to play just a little clip to you in just a second of me talking to the camera while I was out on my bike in early December, just because it really sums up the situation that I was facing all the time. And because I have to commute to, well, obviously to work and to my family and to my friends in different directions from the boat by bike all the time, it really hasn't made for a very pleasant experience. It's just got to be said. And it's sort of a shame that it's this first video of this series that has had all of the great fun outdoors and walking and clambering over the fences and stuff, like I said earlier, taken out of it because of the weather. But also, it's good because it shows the sort of reality of how life isn't all the perfect sunny cruising and all that sort of stuff. But I want to play you the clip in just a second because I think you can even hear a little bit of the sort of stress or just not amused tone in my voice. But at this point, even though it's early on in this video diary compilation, I should say that when I recorded that, I'd already had about five weeks or so of this weather. Um, but before we get on to that, I suppose... Just a few extra things about this video and what make it slightly unusual is because it's taking place in December, which because I work in a supermarket, you can imagine in the run up to Christmas gets extremely busy. So there's more and more overtime. So that itself has taken me away from the canal and put me in an actual proper normal job doing normal human things that aren't running around playing outdoors like I normally would. And that itself also leads to a lot of cycling in and out of town first thing in the morning last thing at night and i've got a couple of clips of that which again doesn't make for great filming when it's just literally pitch black roads and country lanes and mud and all that sort of stuff with nothing to see nothing to look at and nothing really interesting happening other than me turning up extremely wet and muddy either back on tilly or back in town at my mum's house to get changed and then head in to work so well we'll see this as it all unfolds i suppose anyway let's have a look at another wet windy night on the canal and on board tilly well my friends i don't know if you can hear all of the rain and the wind rushing around everywhere but it is about quarter past six and i'm just cycling down the towpath from my friends i am absolutely worn out so i apologize for being out of breath in this little clip but it's just absolutely poured down for hours now and on top of the last four or five maybe even six weeks of extremely consistent rain I've never seen so much standing water just on the towpath and around this part from the Lion Key sort of area down towards St Martin's it's one of the bumpiest, muddiest towpaths that I travel on and seeing it in these conditions you might hear that echo as I'm currently hidden under a bridge trying to take some sort of shelter for a moment but I'm absolutely soaked after only about 10 minutes of cycling uh, the water just splashing up from the ground is gone up over my shoes and soaked my feet. I've obviously been stood up on the pedals and as soon as I sat down on the seat, just the water that had collected on the seat while I was pedaling down has already soaked through the seat, I will say, of my uh, waterproof trousers. And I've now got a wet bum, so that's great fun. <laughs> but I just cannot believe that this rain can be carrying on just week after week after week. You can see just how absolutely soaked through even the waterproofs are here. And of course, getting back on board and wanting to do filming and editing like I do very often, having this sort of background noise doesn't really lend itself well to it. Equally though, on nice calm nights, I've got to say, having the fire go in and the sounds of the elements outside is as cosy as it gets. At long last, and at only 25 to midnight, I'm happy to say that the rain has stopped and the wind has also dropped. I've been doing an awful lot of editing of the book and I'm very happy with the way that it's coming on, so hopefully that's going to be well and truly ready for the first week of January. But now that all of this background noise is finally drawn to a close, I've got my microphone set up and we'll be able to record the very short little voiceover section for the Christmas lights video. To prove the weather as unpredictable as ever, this was the morning that I woke up to, which was handy as I met a friend in town uh, later on, but of course we got rained on. Then I cycled out to my friend's house for a haircut and got rained on again, and after stripping down and sitting at the chair ready in the kitchen for my haircut, here's the dog, post-operation, 
where he discovered they didn't actually have the clippers and I ended up sleeping there overnight and then biking down the towpath back to Tilly to discover this note left by a friendly canal and river trust chap who had rescued my kayak that had blown off the roof onto the road at the side so I left a note in the window saying thanks Lewis so thanks Lewis but now brace yourselves for a jump as I'm gonna put the actual wind sound at the volume the camera recorded it on now. <laughs> Yeah, so it was a pretty windy time all in all, and unfortunately the following day, when I was off and out on my bike nice and early, it didn't stop. Well my friends, I've just had to pull over for a little bit of shelter to have my inhaler. We're currently out here at only 20 past 7, so it's not super early, but my goodness me, this is the morning after the worst of Storm Barney. You can see how dark it is out here still, because it's just cloud cover extreme wind that I managed to just drop out of to record this and a bit of drizzle in the air that once you get into the wind, flipping heck, it's being driven practically back upwards to the cloud by it. Oh, just need a moment, like I say, for me and Hayley. Uh, I thought I would just get the camera out and they'll show you the absolute nothing at all that there is to see out here. <laughs> I did indeed eventually get to work and was greeted by the dog when I got to me mum's ice first thing. Then on the way back to Tilly after work, it was again travelling in the dark. Again, winter, not making this video the greatest I'll ever record, hopefully. And when I got back, I put my bike inside, which is what you're seeing me wrestle with now. Because I'd arranged to basically boat up to a local bridge with decent road access the following morning, which we're about to see now. And again, it wasn't actually a bad morning. Who would have thought it? A little bit of blue sky there and sunrise colours going on. And so the reason for this was at this bridge here to meet my granddad with the toilet tanks and some rubbish to basically go off and empty those. And well, we don't need to focus too much on that task. Well, in usual fine form, we've got everything ready to go. Gonna make me granddad just down at the bridge, just down there. And of course, it's absolutely pouring down. Wonderful stuff. That evening on board, I enjoyed a proper nice, calm, quiet night. It was the usual stuff, get the fire going and just settle in, really. Again, the weather never being trustworthy enough to go out exploring or adventuring. The following morning, though, we had a lovely morning. As you can see, the sun starting to creep up down towards the road bridge. And nice and early, I woke up to this, hopped on my bike and cycled up the towpath to my friend's house. As from there, we then went to the local train station at Chirk Station, which you can now see. We are on the train going past the lovely site of Cronus Ban, just at the back of Chirk, over one of the viaducts here to go to Chester. A little bit of Christmas shopping, but really just to have a wander around. And of course, it didn't take me long to get back to the canal once at Chester. I, don't, I really do dread to think how long it would take to get from Chirk to Chester by boat, when by train it is literally half an hour, which really, well, it sums up why the railways took over from the canals very quickly. You can see here that Chester is just... It's a place that's sort of regarded locally as being a posh area and it's got some absolutely beautiful old buildings in it. And also a very stern looking version of me as soon as I put that hat on. Equally, one of the things that I do love about Chester is where that clock tower we just saw on the archway is, is this little uh, donut shop just in the side of the archway. And, well, grab some donuts, go and eat them by the park, and my goodness me, what's this? Really tame squirrels that climb all over you to grab whatever food they can off you. Yep, I'm up for some of that too. Uh, we got on the train and headed back down to Chirk and one of the strangest things, while we were milling around by Chirk Aqueduct, somebody walked across the road and said, Oh, Dan, oh yeah, you're that uh, narrowboat lad. And just again, the usual crazy way that these things work out. Anyway, the following morning, this happens. About to go about half seven and this is how dark it is out here today. 
we are looking through the stern door. It's pouring down. It's absolutely soaked everywhere you look. Then it was another nice early bike ride up to me friend's house to get a lift into one of the local towns for some shopping with me friend while he was off to work. I then went back to my friend's house where I finally had my hair cut. Then in the evening, back on me bike, back down the towpath and back for a lovely night of book editing on Tilly. Get the fire going as usual and then as again as fortunately as usual all the sound of the wind and the rain outside and I suppose really when you're writing and reading it's not a bad cozy place to be. One of the things that I've really neglected in this video so far is to properly address the sheer amount of writing and editing and reading of my own little books that I have been doing. Now December as work started to increase I did slightly less writing and editing but that was okay because through the end of October and through November and then early December I had done more than I had ever done before and this is something that I say not lightly in this case as previously I've said oh I've written more than I've ever written in recent times and I've said that a couple of times since having Narrowboat Tilly and having all this free time and this perfect environment for sitting down and writing in but with the weather that I've been far too preoccupied with in this video to keep me indoors and just sat on board more than I normally would be even on a daily basis where I like to try and do like a little walk in the morning little walk in the afternoon and a little walk in the evening it just hasn't been fit so that's meant I've been sat here being like Right, there's only so many podcasts and audiobooks I can listen to without starting to feel that like I should be doing something more productive. So over November and early December in particular, I managed to get so much writing done that it's really put me in a good place for the books that I've been planning and working on and wanting to release for a while. Hopefully getting more of those out of the door in 2016, starting on the 5th of January if everything goes to plan. The book that I've really been knuckled down editing and preparing will hopefully be out the 5th of January so stay tuned for that um, but I just wanted to take a moment to directly talk about that that when I'm saying about all the time that I've been stopped from going out doing the stuff I like to do outdoors that's really what stopped it from being the most boring dull time ever for me just being on board day after day being like oh what am I gonna do now anyway let's get back to some canal footage on the 15th of the month, I decided to move up to the poachers or the poachers pocket as it used to be called where I've woken up for the previous two Christmases and I set out early in the morning but well after eight o'clock and you saw that opening clip there. I think that there must have been just some sort of effect of filming on me phone or filming on the iPod, whatever it was when I was filming these particular shops that made it seem really dark compared to what it was in real life as I'm definitely not one for traveling too late or too early but well, as you can see it was a nice enough ride a little bit of mist and haze about to give it that sort of eerie feeling and nice and cozy when you got back inside we're gonna moor up just around this corner here and as you'll see in just a second in the usual way that some of the local residents i.e these geese are before i even had chance to finish mooring up you can see just there on the front of tilly the rope not even tied in a knot yet all of the geese turned up expecting something to eat which unfortunately they were very disappointed with as a little bonus photo here this was my appropriate attire for the Christmas trip as I said earlier in the video I really wanted to wake up by the poachers on Christmas morning as it's where I'd spent the previous two Christmases on board Tilly and the Christmas before that which was the first Christmas I ever woke up on a narrowboat I had woken up only a little bit ahead on the canal down at Chirk Bank so it's all part of that tradition and equally as my friends from up at Western Rin will be moving house very soon it's the last Christmas that they will also be just up the road from the canal so we made sure that it was all lined up perfectly to be one last traditional thing of waking up there and going up to my friends and then going into town which we'll have a quick look at later in this video but as I spent the full two weeks that I was allowed under the continuous cruising rules at that place there's not really much to say in terms of the boat inside of things for the rest of this video it was all the usual stuff that you would expect and I suppose rather than talk about it let's actually show you 
as you can see, it is an absolutely lovely little spot down here. And the only real shame is that where the pub is, just before the bridge you saw just ahead there, to the right hand side there is a pretty big main road so it gets a little bit noisy but it's hardly the worst thing in the world to be fair as we have a little look at some of the scenery from the canal on a little walk I did to get a few supplies from the village of Chirk itself this is again the sort of place that I've been out and about walking for many many years before even thinking about having a boat and it all culminates in this perfect little spot here with Chirk Aqueduct and Jake Viaduct right next to it there and oh, some of the memories that I've got wandering around these places or even boating around it and having trains come across as you travel oh, just fantastic this is the canal side of the poachers as you can well probably tell um, and what's that down at the very bottom there hmm something that could be covered in a lot of lights no idea it's another beautiful day on board by which I mean at the very least it's not raining out there and in a sign of just how mild the weather has become even though we're heading towards Christmas now towards late December I've put just a tiny little bit of fuel into the fire here and it's so mild outside that even just a small fire that I thought ah yeah let's just keep things ticking over has proven to have warmed the boat up to a very uncomfortable level where I've started to strip layers of clothing off and got the windows open at the front here I know admittedly the engine's running so that's keeping the batteries topped up but also heating up the radiator a bit but still this temperature is unbelievable for this time of year and equally the fact that all I'm doing is sitting down here got a new word file open there that I'm working on uh, I've done maybe only about a thousand words or so this morning but just sat here still at a desk I've been far too hot and like I say stripping back layers of clothing and thinking hang on I thought this was meant to be December last year I'm sure that I've got footage from almost exactly one year ago I would say of this particular area where all these fields are covered in uh, ice and frost and we had multiple bits of snow and well it was all very much like you would expect December to be but I suppose at this point I should say let's stop rambling and get on with some work for the day I'd like to take a moment to just talk a little bit more about the actual experience in the build up to Christmas as this is the general area that I was in and these are the sorts of towpaths that you have if you go from Tilly Stern back around down towards St Martin's where we'd come up from and it's not the most ideal scenario to have this sort of mud everywhere you look in some places and that's why I was keen to moor up by the poachers itself where it's on the sort of very fine gravelly surface so that you don't have to go through this sort of thing too much and really in the build up to Christmas it was all just as I say how it's been in other times of December heading in and out of work in the dark and then well getting back to Tilly sitting down with a lit fire and a few thousand words to edit and this again is just going to be a few shots now just walking up and down the old gasworks bridge over an old railway in town on my little route to and from work i just thought i'd share a few different shots of this in different conditions just to get the general gist of how it was always overcast or always dark when i was doing it and we'll see a few shots now from the different roads that I travel on the cycling routes in and out, such as this one, again, in the dark, covered in mud, business as usual. But as I was saying, in Christmas week, I actually had two days off work, which I never ever do. I mean, in almost nine years, apart from when I had uh, some hernias, which was no fun at all, I think I've only had maybe three days off work sick in all that time. And like I say, I added two more days to that in Christmas week, which it's just something that never, ever happens. This is a shot from an actual good day of cycling in and out. And this is a shot of a not so good day cycling to work. Um, but like I say, that wasn't ideal at all. And when I say I was ill, I mean, I don't think I've ever been that ill in, well, certainly not since childhood. And it proper knocked me for six. I mean, I literally just got in bed at me mum's house and slept and then as soon as I'd wake up that was it I was like oh I don't feel very good quick um 
So not to dwell on that too much, but that really did take a lot of the wind out of my sails in terms of what I was hoping this video to be again over Christmas week. I've got plenty of these little shots and bits of footage of the actual commutes in and out. But really, I wanted to do all of the bits to camera that you've seen me doing in certain sections of this video all on one evening and go through uh, talking about everything properly. But I just didn't have the time ultimately to do it as I'd wished it to be done. They are seeing now just a few fields where I recorded my little Christmas message video that some of you might have seen. Which, to be fair, was a lovely place to spend a bit of time on the day before Christmas Eve. Let's hand back over to me though. Well my friends, I'm just walking down from me friends up at Western Rin, back to the boat. I've left me bike up there and collected all the presents that have been building up in recent times. So will be seeing me dad and me sister tomorrow. I've got presents for me here as well, so that's exciting. Um, and yeah, basically this is finally it. Christmas is arriving. Christmas Eve tomorrow. Then I'll be walking up here on Christmas morning back to me friend's house. Grab me bike from there, hassle them for a bit, and then head into town. Right then, I better look where I'm going in the dark here. When I arrived back on board, I was made up to find that a local resident by the name of Richard had left me a gift of a jar of honey and a wonderful message in a card on Tilly Stern. So thank you very much, Richard. The following day, you can see here on Christmas Eve, it was an absolutely beautiful morning. At one point, we did have a rainbow too in the area, but that also meant we we did have some rain too so it wasn't as good as it looks at this exact moment all day but ultimately went off had a fantastic day with me dad and me little sister all the usual fun and games of Christmas unfolded and here we are back on the evening of Christmas Eve a few presents to open them in the morning and well how cosy a place to go to sleep and then here we are waking up on Christmas morning itself Again, you're about to see, yeah, the weather, not quite what I'd hoped for. And although Christmas Day stopped me doing a lot of the things I would normally have done and have done for years, such as biking into town from me friend's house up at Western Rin and that, I ended up having a lift with them because it just absolutely poured down after I'd walked up to their house. Again, you can see this is on the route walking up the muddy way to their house. It's a good job I didn't go the other way as it was completely flooded down the route I was planning, which I suppose would have made for a good video, but not so much for some dry feet, especially on Christmas Day. So, after having a lift into town to my mum's house with them, had the usual fun and games at my mum's, then we all went over to my nan and granddad's house here and sat around and had a big family dinner, and then I went over and had a sleep at my mum's house in the afternoon, fell asleep twice on Christmas Day because that's how old I am. After falling asleep twice on Christmas Day, I ended up stopping the night in town as I was in work at 9am the next day anyway on Boxing Day. So it wasn't as if I was going to get back out to the boat and go off boating for the rest of the week. But it did again mark the first time since getting Tilly that I didn't bike into town in the morning and then bike back out to spend Christmas night on the boat too. And the reason wasn't because I was so tired and already going to sleep all the time but because the weather was probably the worst that it had been all month. And outside on Christmas night, it was extreme gales and downpours of rain that were well, so heavy and being driven by the wind so ferociously that you couldn't go outside and look directly into it because it was just too painful. And as much as I don't want to sound like I'm overdoing it and getting over the top and making excuses or anything like that, because I'd love to just do a silly little bit to the camera now going, oh, afraid of a bit of rain and oh, yeah, too lazy and old now, look at him, he's not what he used to be. And I'd love that to be the end of it. But unfortunately, waking up on Boxing Day, the footage that had emerged online and on the news had summed up just how much worse than I'd even expected and thought that the weather was. I mean, even in a house, you could hear the wind making the roof crack and stuff like that going on. But what I saw on Boxing Day is the worst flooding that I've ever seen in the UK in my lifetime. You're talking places flooded and literally residential streets where people were walking just up to their shoulders in water and rescuers everywhere trying to get on top of the situation. And even places like Manchester, like one of the main cities of the UK, the city centre there flooded and under feet of water. You had bridges in all sorts of places as well being just washed away with the rivers. 
unbelievable destruction, houses collapsing, walls falling down left, right and centre and exposing people's living rooms to the world and just that sort of stuff, like I say, that I've never seen before in such scale on such a widespread level and they've been flooding all through November and December to begin with but I just really want to take a moment to be sensible and serious in this video to say when I've talked about how bad the weather is and how awkward it's made my life having to go out biking and every time I want to go anywhere getting soaked and dragging a load of mud into the boat and that sort of stuff is certainly annoying but it's absolutely nothing and I don't want to claim to be a martyr doing the hardest thing ever when there's people who've literally lost practically everything they've ever had and even before Christmas there were places where people had had their houses flooded and were being told they wouldn't be allowed to return until September in 2016. It's just that sort of level that's been going on. So I wanted to take a moment just to appreciate how extremely lucky that we've been again in this sort of Welsh border area where we tend to, I assume just because of the geography of the area, get off extremely lightly when there's extreme weather conditions in the UK and just say that there's people out there who would look at this video as they probably have done in the past and have talked about bad weather and be like, Dan, you don't know what you're talking about. And I think something that summed it up to me is how much rain there had been falling over those few days around Christmas in this area was when I got back on Tilly after Boxing Day and flipped the bilge pump to pump out the water that collects underneath the engine is it all basically the rainwater that goes through the deck boards and then you have a pump to pump it out back into the canal and well just take a look at this you're seeing more rainwater pumped out of Tilly here than there is sometimes in a period of months it really was just unbelievable the level of water coming out of the sky in December We'll draw this video to a close in just a second with a little bit more boating footage to end on as today, the day I'm recording this, the 29th of December, I moved away from the poachers and went up over the aqueduct and through the tunnel which is the little teaser for what the next video in this series will start out with so stay tuned for that. I just wanted to say though a huge thank you for watching this video especially if you made it this far in that's quite some feat well done um, and really say sorry for it not being the greatest video ever filled with the sort of canal scenery and antics that I'd hoped it would be it's just been as I say unbelievably bad weather which has destroyed every opportunity practically of getting really good shots of these different areas that I wanted to show you I've learnt a lot as well in how to put these videos together and hopefully the future episodes will be a little bit shorter and crammed with a lot more footage rather than this. So I would say stay tuned. I might even rename this episode as The Narrowboat Diaries Episode 00 as a prologue and introduction to the 2016 videos. As I say already the next uh, January video will be filled from the beginning at least with Cheek Aqueduct and Cheek Tunnel so we've got a good start already. Um, ultimately though let's have a look at some boating and say our farewells. This was earlier in the morning setting out from the poachers as I say and I suppose it's the perfect backdrop to do all of my plugs and selling out. Feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos for loads more boaty and outdoors bits if you haven't already. Please do if you're particularly interested or would like to help me out. Consider having a look at my short boaty Kindle books. You'll find links to all those in the description below. And of course, please do consider liking the Facebook page or even adding me on Facebook and Twitter for loads of boaty pictures and stuff like that or spreading the word in general. Until the next time, keep it boat worthy. Have a fantastic day week, month, and of course, farewell.